All right, here's number two in the series of gig stories. Uh, this one, <clears throat> this will be my second tour out of the four that I did across the U.S. in the early 90s. This would have been with a Jimmy Dorsey band. It was a ghost band, of course, because Dorsey's been long dead. But it was supposed to be, I think I mentioned this, supposed to be, uh, the band was supposed to be led by trumpeter Lee Castle, um, who was a Dorsey band member. He ended up passing away about a month and a half before the tour was to happen. The tour was January to the end of March, um, 1991. We started in the LA area. We had about, I think about half a dozen concerts in the LA area. And I think San Diego as well. And then three months later, we ended up in uh, a very chilly, very chilly and being Canadian. Yes, it was very chilly. It's just like home though. Uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul towards the end of March. So anyway, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of, uh, living, uh, out of a suitcase and, and on and off the bus and so on and so forth, but got to see some interesting things and uh, a lot of places that I would love to go back to in the States and other places I never need to go back to again. But anyway, um, so here's a blurb that I wrote about the Dorsey tour and, um, just uh, I'll, if there's any other details I need to interject, I'll do that as we go. Anyway, it says, while on tour with the Dorsey Orchestra, Jimmy, not Tommy, we had a few guest artists traveling with us, along with Henry Cuesta leading the group. Now, let me clarify that. Henry Cuesta was uh, the lead saxophone and clarinetist with Lawrence Welk for about 11 years. And I know that, um, um, you know, the thought that, you know, the Lawrence Welk musicians were all corny and hokey and all that stuff. Actually, they... Henry was an example of they were very, very accomplished players. And I do mention in another post that um, Henry used to jam with the rhythm section and a few of us on stage after uh, sound checks. And we would call a standard and he would just jump right in. And uh, yeah, he was, he, that man could play, I'll tell you anyway. But here it is. Along with Henry Cuesta leading the group and emceeing the evenings, we had a singing trio called String of Pearls. Vocalist Fran Jeffries, who was a Bond girl in the earlier days. I can't remember what movie she was in, but she was in one of them. And jazz vibraphonist Terry Gibbs. I had many chances to hang out and talk with Terry at breakfast and or dinner, on the bus, in the green rooms, at the concert halls, etc. We were together on tour for three months, so we had plenty of time for sharing stories. For sharing stories. It was as though I was traveling with a piece of jazz history, and in fact, I was. I can recall Terry talking fondly and often about when he joined Woody Herman's Second Herd in the late 1940s. The band with the well-known Four Brothers sax section of Stan Getz, Zoot Sims, Herbie Stewart, and then Al Cohn, and Serge Shaloff on baritone sax. Herman's sax section instrumentation consisted of three tenor saxes and one barry sax. He recalled a funny and somewhat nerve-wracking time, I remember this story, while driving on the band bus where everything was sailing along smoothly, and then all of a sudden, the bus started going up on the shoulder and back again and weaving a whole bunch into the other lane and so on and so forth. He looked up over his seat, and there was Sir Shelloff, high as a kite, driving the bus. He also spoke a lot about his time with Buddy Rich, Tommy Dorsey, and clarinetist Buddy DeFranco. And during our concerts, he and Henry Cuesta and the rhythm section used to do a pretty up-tempo version of Airmail Special, as he had done with Buddy DeFranco many times before. Not long after I heard Terry was going to be on the tour, I discovered recordings of the Terry Gibbs Dream Band that formed in the late 1950s and had many top call LA-based musicians, studio players in it. The band was swinging like crazy, being driven by Mel Lewis on drums. By, <laughs> driven by Mel Lewis on drums. He also told me that the group Super Sax came out of his Dream Band sax section that had the likes of Bill Holman, Med Florian, and Joe Maney in it. Very early in university, I discovered Super Sax, which also has Conti Candoli as a trumpet soloist. And then I posted a Super Sax track right after I posted this. All in all, it was the type of learning experience that you can't get from a textbook. Well, I guess maybe you could, but this was a lot cooler and a lot more fun. Now, the Super Sax track that I did post, uh, they did an album called Super Sax Plays Bird, which was... Um, Charlie Parker's songs and solos transcribed for a full sax section, five guys. 
And uh, the one that I posted, the track that I posted was Parker's song Coco, which is a different head written over the chord changes to the old, very fast standard Cherokee. So you can find that on YouTube. I YouTubed it and, and, and put it on there. I have the CD kicking around here too. And I've had that for a number of years and, and uh, always enjoyed listening to Super Sax with Conti Condoli playing solo. So there's also another, um, another story around the time that I was on with the Dorsey band um, when we were in LA um, about going to um, NBC studios and seeing the tonight show that I'll, will be the, my next one. So I just wanted to get this one out of the way first to kind of lay the groundwork about the whole Dorsey tour thing. So, all right. And you know, uh, the other thing I was going to mention in the last video, but of course didn't, um, is that, uh, if you have any questions or want to make comments or anything like that, I'm going to set up a, uh, an email address that you can email me at. Um, and, uh, the address that I have for my website is belltones.ca, B-E-L-L-T-O-N-E-S dot C-A. So I'm going to set up an email address that is YouTube at belltones.ca. So if you have any comments or questions or anything like that, or just want to say hi, um, use that email address, send me a message. Don't spam me, please. I don't want to make $10,000 on the new system and I don't need insurance or uh, Viagra or, um, you know, anything like that. It's not necessary. Don't want to know about it. Don't want to hear about it. So nobody spam me. I will delete you happily. But anyway, YouTube, Y-O-U-T-U-B-E at belltones.ca, B-E-L-L-T-O-N-E-S. If you got anything you want to add or say or whatever, any questions, blah, 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 or not, that's all right. Okay. Take care. Happy isolation. Bye-bye.